Welcome back to the Ultimate System Design course. Now this is the ninth episode in this series. Make sure you watch all the earlier videos in this series. In the previous video, we understood the structure of a system design round. In this video, we're going to talk about how to prepare system design for success. Just like a diet plan or an exercise routine, system design requires structured preparation for optimum results. Otherwise, your results could be subpar. So I'd like to give you some tips that will be extremely helpful in your preparation. Number one, apply to some companies that you don't want to work for. Now this is slightly counterintuitive, but a highly effective strategy. In your first few system design interviews, you're bound to make mistakes that you can learn from. So make sure that your first few interviews are not that important and you're fine failing these system design rounds. You can improve really quickly once you have some real world experience. You can improve really quickly once you have some actual experience, but it will take you three to four interviews to get used to the pace, discomfort and stress that are a part of a system design interview. Two, make sure there's time between interviews. Once you go through a couple of interviews, make sure you get a couple of weeks to reassess and learn before you appear for multiple interviews. Make sure that you work on those weaknesses because weaknesses are usually in the form of bad habits that need to be eliminated. And if you go into another interview round without first eliminating the bad habits, you would end up reinforcing them and that can be quite problematic. Three, structured practice. Make sure you practice with actual real world problems and learn to apply the concepts that you learn. Learning and understanding the concepts is important, but being able to use them in an actual problem statement is the more important skill to have. Number four, mock interviews. If you have friends preparing for system design rounds, you can both prepare together with the help of mock interview rounds. That will help you focus on the same problems at the same time. 5. Analyzing open source softwares A large and complex open source software is a great place to start because you don't only get to know the modules and components but you actually get to see them in code. And if you're a developer, that might just make more sense to you and accelerate your learning. Number 6. Books, Blogs and Videos Reading and being continuously up to date is helpful. Reading blogs where the writer breaks down the problem and implements a solution can be really good. In the next video, I'll share some resources with you that you can bookmark and use them later in your journey. Number seven, setting goals. Now system design isn't as objective as something like data structures and algorithms. Because with DSA, you can easily set goals and track progress. And since it's a bit complicated to set goals for system design, engineers don't end up setting any goals whatsoever. And that can be seriously detrimental. So what I recommend is at least setting goals on the amount of effort that you put in instead of on the results. Because results are something you can't control with system design. For example, you will solve at least five system design problems this week. Number eight, maintain detailed notes. All the feedback that you get from previous system design rounds and all the improvements that you want to make based on the previous rounds especially where you didn't perform well. You want to be noting them down somewhere so that you have a future roadmap to improve on these. Speaking of which, our next point is having a detailed roadmap. Number nine, have a roadmap. Keep a mind map or a notion doc for all the links that you need to go through in your preparation for your system design round. Number 10, ask for feedback. If you fail a system design round, make sure you get in touch with the interviewer over email or LinkedIn and ask them how you can improve. And then this feedback goes back into your detailed notes and your roadmap. Number 11, iterative refinement. System design is an iterative process. Continuously review and refine your design based on feedback, changing requirements and evolving technologies. Adapt the design as needed to meet new challenges or opportunities. Now all these tips are going to be extremely helpful if you apply them and you only get this kind of content on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and share with others. And most importantly, don't forget to watch the earlier videos in this series.
In the next video, I'll share some resources that will be extremely helpful in your system design preparation. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.